Hey, it's KMA. How's your day today? And welcome to the corner. This is advanced Minecraft techniques, tutorials, or whatever. Last episode, I showed you what to do on the first day, and I kind of left it at that. One thing I should have probably shown in the last episode is before you log out for the very first time, I shouldn't even say log out, but after your first day, what you need to do is make one of these guys. This is the newest version of the AFK Fish and Farm. And, and anybody who hasn't seen this yet um, should. It's pretty easy. All you need to do is put a hopper down and put it into a chest. And then dig a hole on the other side of the hopper. Pour, oh, well, actually, you put a fence there. Pour some water there, and the water will roll towards the hole. Pressure plate on top with the little uh, fence gate, and then we got the note block. So basically, you stand here, and then you place something heavy on your right button on your mouse. AFK overnight with the right button pushed down, or, you know, you get all the uh, enchantments. And hopefully what you're looking for is mending books, which seems to be hard, few and far between lately. It seems like they've made it harder to get those, but Before you log out from your first day on a Minecraft world or a server, whatever Make one of these you need the um, glass above you so you can have a Transparent block above the water that you're fishing and honestly I put glass above both of these just because I'm not actually sure if I'm fishing and this or this one I could probably figure it out pretty quick but I just put glass over both of them and what I do is I just make sure that no matter what nothing's gonna spawn where I am nothing's gonna kill me so I do my best to get an iron door there keep myself protected from the evilness that is outside so definitely make one of those and then the main thing is you just need the access to the uh, roof there so what I do, this is that little hidey hole that I had near spawn. I can't, I'm not going to stop the rain. And what I do is I just stand and I just do the two hole dig down. And you can get, figure out faster ways to come up and down because this is kind of a, um, a slow way down. I'd probably use the bubble thing so you can put a um, block of, ma a magma block at the bottom and it will suck you down to the, to the ground. Or And on another side you can put a... Um, soul sand and put water blocks above it and it will suck you up so but right now just for the tutorial and quickness I have ladders you guys can do what you guys want to do so basically what I do once I dig down to 11 see we're down at 11 this is this is lava level um, lava will form right here rarely does it form higher but it does every once in a while and basically what I do is I just dig five that direction, five in that direction, and I dig, I hit the blocks as high as I can, and I make a, um, basically an 11 by an 11 room. And then once I'm uh, done with the room, I make sure it's lit up. It's, it's a mining thing, so it doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to look great. I mean, you can make it look better in the future when depends on how you play minecraft if you um if you play it to <clears throat> build yeah make it look great if you play it for farms and stuff but you know most people who do the farms don't aren't really decorators so you want a whole bunch of chests to hold the blocks that you're going to collect and a whole bunch of this so you can uh craft up the iron and stuff that you dig out and um, what I do is once this main room is complete I go to one edge and I dig five I put down a torch I dig five again I put down a torch then I dig three and I put down a torch and I dig five and I put down a torch and you guys are like uh, what's that all about why why are you doing five five three five and there's a specific reason for that. What I do is I make it a 3x3 three three opening for that length. So it's actually 5, 10, 15, 18 blocks long. 
So I guess I could have said 18 blocks long, but there's a reason why I say five, five, three, five. So after the first five in, what I do is I make the rooms for two tunnels to um, do branch mining. Then I go five, then three, then five, and I make the two areas to go branch mining again. And you, and you might be like, um, why are you doing that? So once you have the areas where you're gonna actually put your little uh, branch mines, choose one, you get a stack of torches. I don't have any torch. Oh, well, I have some torches. And basically stand here, hit five, put down a torch, put down, you know, you can stand here and hit five blocks, put down a torch, five blocks, put down a torch, five blocks, put down a torch, five blocks, put down a torch. I do that until I get 64 torches down. So what is that? 320? Is that right? 320 blocks. I go in that direction, doing five, put down a torch, five, put down a torch. So I got one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, and I just go boink. Then I go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and I go bonk. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. I just want to get some of this done, and I go boink. So I do that until I use up all 64 torches. Ignore the caves. You should be strong enough to kill a couple of mobs on your way, and plus, as you're getting iron, you can make yourself iron armor and also you can make yourself a shield if you f deem it's necessary. Definitely if you're in a UHC, do the make the shield. I'm a pre-shield player, so I uh, don't usually make a shield just because I'm not used to playing with a shield. So why this weird 13 distance here? As you see, five, three, and five. So this is the very end of my, uh, my tunnel. That's 300 something blocks to the other end. So when I get to the very end, I could do five, then I do a three, and then I do a five, and I put a torch up like that in the wall. So the next tunnel I do from the other side will end up right here. So this will tell me where to stop, basically 320 blocks down. Same thing over here, and I collect any ores or stuff that are here. So that tunnel, that, that side tunnel that I was working on it is would connect right here. So when I get to the end, again, I go another five, then put down a torch, three, put down a torch, and another five, then put a torch in the wall. And that will be the area for the next tunnel, next um, branch mining tunnel in this direction. And so at the end, I go one, two, three, four, and I, and I dig a little thing like that, and there's nothing there, and I go to the other side. There's nothing there, and they go four more down, and I do it like that. So why do I do it every four blocks? So four blocks apart like this. Basically, when you click down here, you see all the blocks here on the bottom, you see all the blocks on the top, all the blocks on the right-hand side, and all the blocks on the left-hand side. You won't see any blocks in here, but 99 times out of 100, Groups of ore form in more than just one location. Um, once in a while you'll have a single diamond block, but it's kind of rare. So you have this ability to see all the blocks here. You won't see anything in the middle, but you'll see all the blocks on this side because you have the next poke hole. So if there is a set of ore in here, you will find it because most likely it will come show here around here and because you usually have more than just one block of ore so it shows up so that's why i skip four one you know i i skip three i should say so you can basically see everything in between those three if that makes any sense so that basically covers the most amount of space um, with the least amount of blocks mined to find ore. The reasoning for the 13 blocks in between each one is you can see this now. Yeah, I'm just going to pretend this is one of the poke holes. It's just the edge of the wall, so it doesn't matter. So one, two, three, four, five is a poke hole. And from the other side, when I'm done with this tunnel, it's one, two, three, four, five. So basically, we see all these blocks, all the blocks that aren't here because of this this wall here, the b blocks on the top and the bottom, 
and same here. And again, we get to see the blocks at the end. There's gonna be two spaces in between. You have everything covered. I mean, this is probably the best way to mine, um, in my opinion. So as you go down and back up, well, actually, when I do the tunnel, I ignore all the ores in here, except for the ones I have to break to make the tunnel. And then when I come back, I do the poke holes and pick up every single ore. And when I find um, a cave, I explore the cave system thoroughly. I go to the very ends of the cave system. So basically your first 320 block tunnel like this, coming back you're gonna run into a whole bunch of caving so you can get a lot of iron you can get a lot of um all the ores that you want kind of on a quick quick way um because you're gonna run into these caves and you know some caves just run on forever and you know you can get into a cave system that takes an hour or two to actually clean out while you're fighting mobs uh, and i'm trying to find one right now and i've already explored all right, so here's a cave system. It's probably not a big one. All right, yeah, that's not bad. And um, I just explore everything. So what I do, and this is a good old Paul Thor's Jr., and I might have hit on this real quick in the last episode, is I uh, put the torches to the right. That means um, on the wall to the right. That means if you're dropping water, your torches won't be washed away for one. And for two, when you're lost in a cave, if you come back out and the torches are on your left, you know you're going to the end of the cave. So you can find your way back fairly easily. I, I get completely lost when I go on servers and stuff. Once I saw that Thrive and Survive series with Paul where he put everything on the right hand side, when you're going into the cave, that means when you're coming out, all the torches will be on your left hand side. And sometimes you have areas that, um, Let's see if I did it up here real quick. No, I, I didn't quite do it up here, but sometimes when you come to an area that comes back, I put a torch on the floor. So if I come across to, to a area that has another cave going to a different direction and I run into a torch on the floor, I know I did that down there. I know that part of the cave has been cleaned out of stuff, so I don't have to go into that. So that's just like a horseshoe cave where you come go in one side and it comes out another side, even though it's in the same area. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of what I do with that. So now that you know how the um, the poke holes and the the themes behind how I cave and why I do the poke holes like I do. Um, what I tend to do immediately on a new world after I get the food, that's why I was trying to gather so much food, because I plan on caving for basically the next 10 to 15 real life hours. Um, because it is important to get all the ore basically right away. Once you do this, you won't need to cave again. I know it's a little bit of a grind, but uh, to me, caving like this, doing the branch mining is a is relaxive, almost meditative, like a long drive on the highway. And um, so what I do before I consider myself done with the branch mine caving, like I said, we did the five, the five, three, five. So the 18 back. So that gives us one, two, three, four. And then on the other side, same exact thing. One, two, and back here, three, four. You should have enough um, ore and stone to basically set yourself up for most of the rest of the play and the server. Of course, there's going to be, or the world, of course, there's going to be builds like a witch farm or, you know, a slime farm where you're going to accumulate a whole bunch of blocks but this will give you the great amount of ore that you need um to basically cover most of the ore that you need for the time that you're playing in the world so once you get done with these eight tunnels and you do the poke holes and stuff you will have a crap ton of ore and this is i only did one tunnel and this is what I got with the one tunnel ore wise. 
So you can times this by eight to kind of get an understanding of how much you're gonna get. And also, yeah, so times this by eight. Um, so that would be 320 blocks of iron. 64 blocks of diamond. A uh, hundred and what? Jeez, that one's a tough one. 208 blocks of lapis. 48 blocks of gold. You get the idea. A whole crap ton of stuff. Um, plus, whenever you run into a spawner, you either dig straight up and mark it, or you go like this and take a picture and write down the coordinates somewhere so you can come back and turn the spawner into a working thing. Because, yes, doing all this will give you a ton of uh, XP because you're getting all the coal and stuff. Because, I mean, you, you may see this, oh, well, you know, that's only two and a half stacks of coal, but... Um, I cooked up all that iron and stuff already and all these furnaces have a stack of coal in them So that's another what? Uh, 10 14 furnaces with a stack of coal in each one. So that's another Probably a couple of stack blocks of uh, a couple of stacks of blocks of coal and you know You get the mining out of the way you get the grind out of the way and then you can focus on building because then you start having the stuff that you need to build so that is how I go from having nothing to spending maybe a day or two okay if you're a streamer maybe a stream or two of just branch mining to get a crap ton of blocks can you imagine just branch mining and having a stack of diamond blocks I mean it's not that hard to do it's just you got to sit there and do the branch mining and collect all the blocks that you need and you will have everything you will need at the beginning of the game and later on of course you'll be making iron farms and stuff but I mean come on look at this so you make the iron farm you're gonna have 320 blocks of iron that's enough for two beacons basically so that's goal number two. So the first day, you get a, you get the stack of wood, you get a stack or two of food, you get yourself enough to make a couple of furnaces, and then you focus, you come down and do this big mining grind, which will, I call it a grind, but it's really not a grind. I enjoy doing it. But it will give you everything that you need to survive in the Minecraft world for the next um, amount of time till you start building real farms, which we will be going over in this advanced tutorial. Farms that I like to use, farms that I've never used, and comparing farms, comparing foods, which food's the best one to make, which one's the easiest one to do, which one has the best saturation, and which one should you focus on getting. I'm making a kelp farm so you don't have to waste your coal on cooking things. You can actually use coal to build with things because coal looks freaking awesome when you combine it with things like nether brick and stuff because it is nice having a half a, ch a double chest full of stacks of blocks of coal that you can use for build you don't have to worry about using it and of course before you find the alternative uh cooking method which now includes bamboo i guess uh i use kelp i make a kelp farm as early as possible so i can stop using coal because um coal is a very good block I mean, I grab it. I mean, I see people all day long sk skipping over the coal because, yeah, well, I got a stack of coal, you know, and I'm just cooking up some chops and stuff. But people forget it's a really, really good block to build with. Before you log out and you're going to go to sleep for the first day or whatever, set up your fishing farm. It takes five minutes to set up um, and you've probably done at least one one. Uh, branch mine, you know, have enough iron to make, I don't know, 10 hoppers and enough wood to make 
I don't know, 10 sets of chests, and you can go nuts uh, fishing, and when you wake up, you can, if you go to work or school, you can do it all day, AFK, at the fishing farm all day, and you just continue AFKing every time you log off for a while, if you don't use your computer for anything else, or if nobody else is using it, so you can get as many mending books as possible, because we want to put mending on everything that we wear, armor-wise, and weapons, and tools, and shovels, and everything. Because once you make everything with mending, you're not going to need a diamond again. You're going to, like I, like I showed over here, but we'll have 64 blocks of diamonds. You're not going to really need that. I, mean, I guess you could use it to decorate the outside of a beacon, but that's what we need. That's what is different from a relaxed player to a more advanced player is that we advanced players like to accumulate a whole bunch of stuff so we don't have to go farming to make a build i will get into food in the next episode which at this stage is the best food to make because most likely by the time you're done with all this branch mining, you're going to be really low on food. So you're going to want a food source. And also, you also want to make sure you are planting sugarcane around and harvesting it um, until you make a sugarcane farm. Because you also want an enchanting table with the full bookshelves around it. Or at least anvils with books from your fishing farm. But hopefully this will help you on your first stages of the game. So remember, get food, wood, and some blocks. Find a hidey hole, dig straight down to 11, and make this setup, or make a setup sort of like this. This is just the way I do it. That's the way I enjoy doing it. And I figure with the eight tunnels, you'll have plenty of ore to make it through probably a good two or three months of Minecraft playing. Unless you go ill mango crazy making farms and stuff. Um, and yes, it is a little bit of a grind, but it is a fun grind. Plus, you get to kill lots of skellies, you get to kill lots of animals, you, you know, get lots of drops from the mobs and stuff, and um, you'll have so much stuff that you don't know what to do with, but just remember, fish when you're logged off. Some people think it's cheating, it's part of the game, um, I don't think it's cheating. If you think it's cheating, don't fish and suffer. <laughs> but that's it for today. It's KMA. Have a great day. Um, please subscribe. Hit the like button if you enjoy the series. I'm not sure if people are enjoying it or not. That is way too close to my face. So I'm going to go upstairs and fish some more. And we will see you next week when I show you about the foods and which farms to make to make certain foods and different ways of doing foods if you want to make foods so it looks pretty making farms that look pretty or if you just want to make a whole bunch of food real quick and just have like a nano farm i'm going to go over the different types of foods the fastest ways to get some of the foods and uh some ways to uh, mass produce the food so you don't have to worry about the foods in the future have a great day goodbye